Here we go again, Celebrity MasterChef, the toughest cookery competition on television. The sheer panic every time. You're constantly like... <laughs> they may be famous in their own world, but now they've got to prove how good they are in the kitchen. The pressure's back on and that's scary. I'm a sportsman by trade. I am fiercely competitive. We've got singers, actors, dancers, but as long as they can cook better than I could dance, we'll be fine. In the MasterChef heat, five celebrities have been pitted against each other. Oh, <laughs> oh dear. God, uh, I guess it'll come out my wages, won't it? I love it. <laughs> Last time, after giving it her all, television actor Amanda Donahoe... Thank you. It's been a pleasure. ...went home. Now the remaining four are back to fight for a place in the semi-finals. I honestly didn't think I was going to be here today. I can just do the best I can uh, and hope that it's good enough. Today, I am really anxious, really nervous. That's why I'm sporting a smart shirt, because I think if it goes horribly wrong, at least I'm going to try and look smart. I'm not as nervous as what I was the first time, but you just never know what they're going to throw at you, and that is a, it's a bit daunting. I want to prove to myself that I can do more. I want to show you I can do this. Welcome back. First test is a relay invention test. Two teams. By putting your aprons on, you've accidentally already put yourself in teams. Two red aprons, two blue aprons. Red team, blue team. Oh, mate. <laughs> Here we are again. <laughs> Each team will be tasked with producing two dishes. One main course and one dessert. You will have a total of one hour and 15 minutes to do that in. The first person to take the helm will cook for 30 minutes, at which stage they will hand over to the second cook and cook for another 30 minutes. The final 15 minutes of the cooking, the two of you will come together to finish off the dishes. What I'd like you to do right now is decide who is going first. Up to you, mate. Any, uh, uh, any preference? Uh, well, I, I, d I wouldn't know what to do. Do you, do you trust me to get the ingredients together and would you put something together? I think you're better with flavours. You get it started. Yeah. yeah, and then I'll finish it off. OK. Who's cooking first in the blue team? Oh, sorry. Me. Misha, you're up first. Who's going it? first? Sam or Sid? Um, oh, <laughs> I'll go first. You're going first? Yeah. Brilliant. Uh, Sam. Danny, thank you very much. Off you go. Good luck, Sid. Good luck. It's all down to Misha to get this test started. Come on, Misha. Do us proud. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Sorry. Right now, reveal your main ingredients. Oh! With the rhubarb. Your main course must contain the fish. Your dessert must contain the rhubarb. Just having a bit of a panic attack right now. Just uh -huh. a quick one. Um, when, when I cook the meal, yeah, I, I take bits from that to make the full meal. It's Correct. Right. Beautiful. Loving your work. It's all good. Okay. Bye. Done. What is the fish? It's fish. Ladies and gentlemen, one hour, 15 minutes in total. Your cooking time, 30 minutes. Let's cook. As well as salmon and rhubarb, Misha and Sid now have to choose from a selection of ingredients to create their dishes. What's this? Butter. butter. That's a good start, isn't it? Bit of garlic, bit of garlic. I'm really pleased I've been teamed up with Sid. I love Sid, he's wicked. Oh, I don't know a clue what I'm doing here. Ah, oh, well, there goes Sam. You know, he's from a duo, I'm from a duo. It 
Sid and Sam, here we come. <laughs> that looks good, doesn't it? Sid! Yes? What are you going to do with that big lump of fish? Greg, at this moment, I don't know. Uh, I'm not very au okay fait with salmon. I think that might be a bit too big. I think you've just got to relax and let your cook's brain kick in, young Sid. Uh, I think that's gone on holiday, me cook's brain. What about that rhubarb? What are you going to do with that? Uh, could do a... Oh! Uh, oh, uh, ah! Rhubarb crumble. Rhubarb crumble. Oh, well, that has to go in the frying... Uh, in, a, in a pan to be boiling up. So we, we, you, you're going to leave a salmon here ready for your young compatriot to cook? I think so. I'd... And you're going to get the rhubarb underway? I would like to do that, yeah. Cos uh, I don't think... If I start cooking that now, it's going to be knackered. So plan, Sid. Yeah. High five, Sid. Woo! <laughs> I'm not sure Sid has an idea of where this salmon's going to go, but he most certainly knows what he's doing with that rhubarb, and he's on his way to a crumble. Pan, pan, little pan, little pan. Not large one. Little pan, large, not little large. Oh, dear. Sugar, 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 sugar. Crumble, crumble. 15 minutes gone. 15 minutes to go. Do you know what? I'm going to be straight with you. I'm literally making it up as I go along, cos I really... I'm just lost. It's all... It's all going off. I've never seen a fish filleted or skinned like this before. Well, maybe I can teach you something, which I very much doubt. You have got time to do something quite nice. nice I've things. thought about it. I know what I'm going to do. Um, I'm just having a bit of a panic attack. Hold on. Calm down, mm. make a plan in your head, look at all the ingredients up there <sighs> and make something delicious. Otherwise, you're going to just have a piece of salmon and mashed potato. Have you thought about the dessert? I hate rhubarb. Huh? Brilliant. I That's can't, good. I really hate it. It's, for me, it's like the worst thing ever. I can't actually cope. You can cope. You're being a drama queen. I know, but that's what I am, though. That's who I am. I'm quite concerned about Misha because she doesn't have any direction at all. She doesn't like cooking rhubarb, and the way in which she's cutting up that fish frightens me. Just seven minutes, and then we change over. My worst nightmare is if I go in there and I can't fathom at all what Sid is trying to cook. Sid, what's black and lives in a saucepan? Yeah, crumble. Oh, and it stinks as well. Oh, dear. Rhubarb crumble is looking very bad. I hope it don't take long, Sam. <laughs> I hope he, he leaves me some sort of clues of what he's cooked when I get in there. Um, it's just really tough. Oh, forget that. I'll get another pan. Despite her panic, Misha is now boiling potatoes for mash, cooking spinach, and making a fish sauce using the bones, all to accompany the salmon. See, I've got to think about Danny. You see, Danny's got to come along and he's got to know what to do. I'd imagine she's going to have the main dish up and running and then get a feeling she's going to leave the dessert. She's quite openly a hater of cooking dessert. I haven't started dessert yet. The dessert may be my bag. Right, swap over. Off you go. I said. All right, mate. Off you go, off you go. Good luck, mate. Off you go. Oh, I can't I tell him, can't I give him any clues. <laughs> right. Mine's gone blank. That first half hour went very fast. I, I can't believe that. And then bang, in comes Sam. What a fat jack, maybe. Now, whether they can take one look at it and go, yes, 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 sorry, ball, no, 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 no. <laughs> Rhubarb crumble, maybe. With a flapjack topping type situation. Where to start? I've already done the main, so he's got half an hour to come up with a dessert. Surely. I've never, I've never used a rhubarb before. I can't stand the things. I'm not being funny, but Danny needs to work it out. If he doesn't make a do listen, if he doesn't make a good dessert. I want to take him out. How are you doing, Danny? 
I was all right. Until you walked in? Yeah. Your main issue right now is you don't have a dessert, do you? No, but I'm, gonna, I'm just trying to make my first ever crumble. So you've got all the ingredients you need to make crumble? Not yet, I haven't got an egg. You, you put egg in a crumble? Do you? I don't know, I'm asking. I've never made one before. Brilliant. Are you allowed to give me any advice on a crumble? Well, what, what, is, is it, what is it, savoury or sweet? Sweet. So what's it need in it? Sugar. Where's the sugar? In... I'd go to the other bench if I was you and find some. Yeah, yeah. OK, go! Oh, you got any sugar? Sugar, sugar. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers. Can you make me one of your crumbles? Yeah. <laughs> Between Misha and Danny, they both don't like rhubarb. This is amazing. I've never known two cooks who don't like rhubarb. Wow, I'm frightened for them, and I'm frightened I'm going to eat it. I think I've just cooked my first ever bit of rhubarb. Sam's already underway with the crumble. His problem now is to decide what should accompany the salmon. Sam will do brilliant. He'll, you know, I know he's, I feel it in my bones. He's uh, quite calm and I'm sure he'll, he'll take it in his stride. Plan is for baked salmon. Hopefully, if I don't overcook it, that should taste nice. I'm going to do some, like, sautéed potatoes and broccoli. That's my, my plan at the minute. Sam, on a scale of 1 to 10, how happy are you with what he's left you? I'll say an 8. It's pretty good. It's pretty good, actually, yeah. No, I think, yeah. I can tell when you're happy now, Sam. Your voice goes up a couple oh, of times. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I'm happy. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> you're all right, mate, aren't you? Yeah, hopefully. Sam looks pretty comfortable. However, he's abandoned the salmon that Sid had in a pan and he's put it inside two sheets of tinfoil. He's going to bake that in the oven. Sam isn't giving any thought to how the dish is going to finish. I'm hoping he moves himself towards the sauce. Ten minutes, and then your partner's come back in. It's going in the oven now. The last part of the challenge, I'm hoping, is going to be easy, cos by then, when I go in, Sam will have said, we're doing this, 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 this. And, and it's just a matter of making it look pretty for uh, John and Greg. Yeah, pretty pictures. Danny's decided against Misha's idea of mashed potato. What happened to the other spuds? I'm going to just cut up some small, nice small ones because they've got horrible and fluffy and falling apart. I'm just going to get these just right. into tiny little cubes just so we can still take them off if we want. You better hurry up. Yeah. Yep. With the potatoes ready for frying, he now turns his attention to the salmon. My biggest worry is that he cooks the fish properly. You can't really go wrong with salmon, you know? All he has to do is just put it on the frying pan and make sure that skin is nice and crispy. Right, your partners are coming back. How are we doing, Chef? How are you doing, mate? Were you, think, right, were you thinking a rhubarb flapjack crumble type thing? You got it. Yes. Come, Come on. on. Um, We've got rhubarb and berry crumble in there. I'm loving you, mate. Yeah, you don't oh, love boy. me yet. The potatoes have not exactly... They've kind of just crumbled, so I'm just trying to get something to cook off. I was going to saute them. Or was you looking for a mash? Mash, just mash them. We it. can mash them, we can. We've got the others, they're just there. What happened? I left the potatoes on there, and they came out hard. You should have made that hotter, though, yeah? It's just on full, mate. Because... Let me see. OK, no, you see? Because that is soggy. Yeah. Yeah? I've been told them. Are you bossy, Misha? No. No, she's all. lovely. I'll tell you what I am, though, demanding. Really demanding. Well, all right, all right, I'm bossy. OK, all right. No, man. don't, she's lovely. Come on, dessert, let's go. Is there any crumble about? What's the matter with that crumble, Sid? Uh, it's a bit liquidy, there's too much rhubarb in it and not enough crumble. Now, what am I going to kind of stick it on the liquor hill? Yeah, it's pretty it's hot. hot. Uh, it's a shame we've not got like a cream or something. Ah, yeah. Something that in it. Yeah. Oi! Oi! Oh, nice. You thieving toe rag. <laughs> Where's that pot? Yeah. Yeah. You got 60 seconds left. All right, honey, is that done properly? Can't with 60 seconds, mate. That don't look done to me. Yeah, lovely, lovely. I think that'd be enough. You don't, don't, don't overdo it. No? Yeah, yeah lovely. No. Not when they get in some of these restaurants, you don't even get that. No. <laughs> Eddie Lard would go, what? Is that <laughs> it? <laughs> well, if these cook, we'd be all right. 
Wow. Go, go, go. Yeah. Lovely. You want your sauce on the side, yeah? Yeah, my sauce. Time's up. Time's up and finished. Shall I go and wash up now, Misha? Yeah, so you, <laughs> no, you don't play into that, Danny, man. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that, yeah? Considering the amount of mess that was on your bench, I'm A, surprised you got some food up. B, I'm surprised how good it looks. They've made pan-fried salmon with sauté potatoes, spinach, and a garlic, cream, and dill sauce. Should we hold hands? It'll make it easier. Yeah, thank you, baby. Some of your chips are soft, some of them are a little hard. Your fish is cooked well enough for me. The sauce has great flavour, it's got acidity, it's got seasoning. However, its texture is too wet. You've got the makings of a decent dish here. I wish you'd started working, pair of you, in the calm way you finished. <laughs> <laughs> I like your little crispy potatoes. I love the spinach with that garlic rich sauce. Uh, sharp, but at the same time sweet and flavoured with fish. Uh, I, the chaos <laughs> that you guys... Uh, I just what was so extraordinary, but your food tastes really good. Their dessert is rhubarb crumble served with cream. I can't remember if I put enough sugar in it. OK. So we're going to see. I know, no enough sugar yeah. in there, no enough sugar. Never mind. Whoa! You've got the texture right, you've made the top right, it's OT, it needs some more cooking. There's no sugar in there. That is so sour. I reckon you could strip paint with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you've got a really lovely crumble top. Uh, the inside, there's the right quantity of fruit to crumble, but there's not enough sugar, it's really sour. I feel like I've been kicked in the shins. No, oh, baby. baby. I hope that you two advance much further in the competition because I really want either of you to make me a dessert <laughs> that I can eat. <laughs> <laughs> well done, babes. I knew the sugar straight away, didn't I? There it is. There's the culprit over there, look. When they bit into that crumble, I did... <laughs> I knew it was going to be a little bit tall, but I, I, didn't, I didn't expect that. That was how I felt for them. I bet that's a mistake I never, ever make again. I mean, we only got two things wrong there. If I remember to just thicken the sauce, we would have been rocking. Sid and Sam have cooked their salmon on papillot with fennel, dill and white wine. It's served with fried potato slices, broccoli, roast vine tomatoes, and the salmon cooking liquor. The flavours in the cooking juices that were in the foil when you baked in, that's lovely. That's buttery and there's acid from wine in there and the fennel is also very lovely. But, of course, it's too watery to stick to the fish. The fish itself is overcooked. The salmon, it's going a bit dry and a bit chalky. And because of that chalkiness, you need something acidic with it for it to be delicious. I like your little chips with the fennel and the juice that come out of your cooking liquid. But the whole thing, to me, needs a good squeeze of lemon or some capers mm. or, or some hollandaise, something which just elevates it to become a little bit more special. Shall we move to your... Rhubarb flapjack crumble? What I love about you guys is you could sell anything, couldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> Make up a name for it and you'd sell anything, wouldn't you? Oh, dear. I love rhubarb and I really like what you've done with the rhubarb because it's still whole but it's cooked all the way through and the, the honest flavour of rhubarb shows through. Sticking on top of that is a sticky, sweet, almost porridge mix. And it's gone thick and gluggy rather than being free-flowing like a crumble. It's just a bit too dense. Yeah. 
Pudding sugar with rhubarb. What a clever idea. <laughs> 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 what a clever idea. Makes it taste sweet. There is sweetness in here. There's also the sharpness of rhubarb. There's some rhubarb that's cooked down really soft and stewy. There's some little bits that have got some crunch in it. Mm. The flapjack top, to me, is oaty and a little bit of toffee flavour. That, for me, is perfectly yummy. It looks a sight. <laughs> but there's, there's real quality there. Well done. I like the way you worked, actually, and you worked separately, and then you very much worked together when you came back. You were very much a team, uh, and that, that'll hold you in good stead, I think, as long as one of you can work out how to cook a fish. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to have done a bit more for Sam, cos, uh, really, I did leave him holding the baby, as it were. <laughs> Considering that was the, we, we had no idea what each other was doing and what each other was thinking, I'm actually quite happy with what we came up with in the end. We got it all done and we did it in time and it was edible, <laughs> which is a good thing. Um, but, yeah, it's just a shame it didn't have that, that slight edge to make it be a bit like, wow. An interesting day for us as judges. We've learnt a lot. <laughs> But next time we see you, you won't be cooking just for Greg and I. I suggest you rest well, you consider teamwork and planning. You're going to need it. Bye. Today, Sam, Sid, Danny and Misha are heading to southwest London for their first mass catering challenge. This whole not knowing thing at MasterChef is unreal, isn't it? I know. You just... I can't stand secrets. You know what I'm like. <laughs> just tell me everything was going on right now. This mystery thing, it's not, I'm not feeling it. <laughs> oh, my gosh! Where's the centre? Wimbledon. Gone? 15, love. Welcome you four to the All England Lawn Tennis and Croquet Club. Home to the oldest tennis tournament in the whole world, Wimbledon. Quietly behind the scenes, there are a multitude of people working towards the iconic two-week event that is Wimbledon. And those people today are going to be your lunch guests. You four will be responsible for feeding 100 people. Today is all about teamwork and you'll be in the same teams as you were in the last task. Misha and Danny, you're one team. Sid and Sam, you're the other. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, enjoy. Lunch is at 12.30. Off you go. Lunch is at 12.30, guys. Honestly, shift your butts. <laughs> what time is it now? Wow, 20 to 10. Get your skates on. Keeping a watchful eye on the teams is head chef Gary Parsons. Morning, guys. Morning. Morning. You've got 10 minutes to come up with your menu. I've got a great selection of fresh meat, fresh fish, vegetables, so I expect something spectacular. Good luck. Cheers. Thank you. Using the ingredients provided, each team must make 40 portions of a meat or fish dish, 15 portions of vegetarian, and 50 portions of dessert. So we can either go mince or we can go... Oh, that's lamb, yeah? Well, I reckon that's potatoes. Cod. I have been Wimbledon before, but I was drinking champagne and eating strawberries, and I think after today, I'll probably never look at Wimbledon the same way again. Can't see any carrots. We've got to do 100 people. That's at some task. It's very, very scary. I'm, I really am, honestly. I'm, I'm, I'm really nervous. Go on it. Talk to me, mate. Right. I'm gonna do lamb stew. Yeah. Yeah, that's so good. 
and you rock a lamb stew. I yeah? rock it. I kill it. Right. It's my thing. You're going to kill me now. You are going to kill me, right? Why? Mushroom risotto <laughs> served in peppers. Are you sure you want I'm to go sure. with risotto? Yeah, I'm going to go for it. Risotto's early. really tricky, though. It's like it's if, it, right. if you get it a little bit wrong, it's really not right. What, what are you thinking? We've got potatoes, yeah, plenty yeah, of potatoes. Potentive potatoes. Cottage pie? Yeah. yeah. For the veggie, I reckon pasta and a ratatouille. So that's tin tomatoes and yeah. stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, and is there? Do you have any treacle? Yeah. Okay, lovely. Could be treacle sponge. Yeah. Treacle sponge. Uh, golden, I reckon. Yeah. yeah. Custard, yeah. yeah. Dessert, I think we're gonna have Talk to, to we've got to go apple crumble. Apple crumble? It's hearty, it's and we've had such bad run of luck with dessert. Right? Let's do a smash of dessert out there, yeah? Right, guys, time's up. We've got ten minutes. Now you need to start buckling down and getting on with it. Right. OK? We're cooking the staff. They're all very demanding, all um, have an opinion. So if they don't listen to me, they'll fall on their face. The teams now have just two and a half hours before lunch service. I have never cooked for 100 people in my entire life. The most people I've cooked for is maybe six the most. So this is a massive challenge for me. Misha's first task is to prepare and cook her lamb for the stew. Did I get my big, big pot? You're doing yours in the brat pan. Oh, what? Right. Can I cook it in here? Yeah, 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 yeah. And even, what, cook it down as well yeah, with yeah, sauce? Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow, that's yeah. very different. She browns off the meat with rosemary and green peppers. I'm not used to cooking with this big thing. It's a big, massive contraption. But uh, getting my head around it. Danny makes a start on the peppers for his risotto. Mish. Yeah, baby. Right, these peppers for this risotto. Do we Talk want to? to um, we can either take the top off, scoop it out, put the lid back on for service, or we can cut them in half, use them as little bowls. Can't you cut up the peppers and put them in the risotto? No, I'm no. serving them in the peppers. I'm serving them in the peppers. No. You've done this before, haven't you? No. I'm a bit concerned about Misha and Danny's vegetarian risotto served in a pepper. Why are they serving it in a pepper? They're trying to tart it up, and they're in danger of spoiling it. On the other side of the kitchen, Sid is making a start on the meat dish. Oh, that's a good start, isn't it? <laughs> this is cottage pie, which I've got to do the onions put this lot of meat in there and stop it from burning. So, hopefully, I hope so. Meanwhile, Sam begins to make the treacle sponge dessert. We could be potentially playing it safe, but who doesn't like cottage pie and treacle sponge pudding and stuff like that? Um, so, but at the end of the day, we've still got to cook it right and make sure it's, it's, it's done well. How are you doing, Sid? You all right, mate? Yeah, not so bad. Whoa. Sid and Sam are the crowd pleasers of the day, that's for sure. Love a cottage pie. I think it's a really lovely idea. Sam's dessert I'm impressed by. Treacle sponge served with custard. It's good. With the peppers prepped, Danny starts on the potatoes to accompany Misha's lamb stew. I don't like this thing, man. Honey, you know what? Why is it just really hot on one side? I want it to simmer, but I don't want that. Can I just put it in a big pot? Yep. This is how I was brought up. So I want the How many school. pounds do you want? Look, I, look, I'm not speaking to you, You've been to all our pounds. It's very aggressive. I ain't battery. got any pounds. Have you got other things up there? I've only got one. You haven't? No, this is my pot. Well, whose is that one there, then? It must be Danny. Well, it's, it's a team, isn't it? Sid, are you picking on my teammate again? No, I've got no oh, pants. You've nicked them all. Sid Louise, I'm telling you. Ah, now that's what you call a pam. <laughs> Any chance of a cover? Little and large. Sid is now using his hard-won pot to start caramelising his onions. Guys, right, 10 to 11. Misha, is your dish going on, the lamb, yeah? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Mr. Little, give him a nudge, Misha. Mr. Little? Well, how are you doing? You ready? Hey! How's your dish coming along? Uh, yeah. I'm glad I'm not partnered with her. I've been battered by loads of men in the kitchen today. It's almost like because they know I'm a chick. 
And you see, the problem with me is they look at me and they think, oh yeah, she's five foot ten, yeah, she'll knock us out. So they're more aggressive with me, not realising that I'm a softie. You know, it's one of them, what do you do? Sam's treacle sponge is ready to go in the oven. While it cooks, he can get to work on the vegetable pasta bake. Is pasta bake not a bit sort of 1970s rather than being 2015? Maybe, but my missus makes it and I love it. It's the best thing that she makes in the house. Oh, God, your wife's. Yeah. <laughs> sure to be delicious. <laughs> she'll be well happy. Especially well, if you say it's nice, she'll be well happy. <laughs> His wife's pasta bake will need red onions, peppers, courgettes and tomatoes to be prepped. The restaurant we're serving is down below. We need to be leaving here at 12 o'clock and then we need to be sort of set ready for about half, half past 12. So, uh, a little bit nervous. Yeah, they've got, they've got a lot to do. Yeah. How long we got till service? <laughs> Oh, dear. Founded in 1868, the All England Lawn Tennis and Croquet Club has been home Love 30. to some of the greatest tennis matches of all time. Game, set and match, Djokovic. It takes over a hundred staff, including highly skilled craftsmen, to maintain its 19 professional grass courts, heritage buildings and grounds. And with this year's Wimbledon Championships only days away, the pressure is on to have everything ready in time. As soon as one tournament finishes, we're preparing for the next tournament straight away. We have lots of different tradesmen, starting from carpenters, painters, plumbers, electricians. It's important that lunch is served on time and we're fed well. It really does give us the, the energy we need to see us through the day. Back in the kitchen, Danny's apples are cooking down, giving him time to start on the mushroom risotto. Misha might be right about the risotto not quick, cooking quick enough, but don't tell her. Misha's lamb is slowly simmering, so she can make a start on a tomato sauce that will accompany Danny's dish. For some reason, this butter is just not melting, and it's like, I ain't moving. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to, come on, baby, you can melt. I know you can. I'll tell you what we need. We need some garlic carp in chunks, yeah? Garlic ca carp in chunks. Ready for the potatoes when they go in the oven. Yeah. Can I get some big chunks of garlic? Hello? Danny, how you getting on? Well, I think everything's going semi according to plan, um, as long as I don't burn the risotto. It's made of rice and liquid. You can't yeah, burn it. It's like burning, boiling water. Yeah, but I'm the guy that didn't put sugar in a crumble, remember? You need to get some liquid in that risotto. Yes. Because you might burn it. Maybe, Danny, you'll be the first person in living history. I'm going to give it a go. I'm just finishing off this pasta bake. This is moments away from going in the oven and just getting finished off. I think, I think we're looking good. Sid's just doing the mash. How are we getting on with the mash, Sid? All right! <laughs> Guys, it's quarter 12, so we need to start thinking about moving out, yeah? Mr Little, how long for those spuds? Uh, they're nearly done, Chef. Right. First time, great machine. I want to take it home with me. Perfect mashed potato. Well done. With the pasta bake in the oven, Sam can check on his treacle sponge. Will it test it? Not yet. Sponge is done. Happy their treacle sponge is cooked and ready, the rush is now on to assemble the cottage pie. You, Phil, and I'll, I'll spludge. I'll okay. spludge. They need to be in the oven soon as. On the other side of the kitchen, Danny is also rushing to assemble his apple and raspberry crumble. I am going to get an apple crumble right if it kills me. Danny, you got sugar in it this time? I'm sweet enough. Is it? Yeah, it's sugar, it's sugar. Pushing through her workload, Misha has already finished the risotto's tomato sauce. All right, Danny, quickly, just taste it for me. 
very smart to eat. That what... That's what you wanted, right? Well, yeah, I know. Oh, where's my man? Where's my yeah. man gone? Oh, baby, listen. He's Something saying... a bit stronger. He's saying it should be stronger. Explain yourself, chef. I'd say more seasoning in it. A little bit more seasoning, more herbs. Salt, pepper, I'll get some basil. Salt, pepper and basil. Basically, now, we have got these last lot of mushrooms to go, and I think me and Mish are ready to start thinking about going downstairs. Danny, do you need me for anything? I'm going downstairs to do the cabbage no, that's good. That's and good. the go. custard. Right, Sid, Sam, we're good to go? Yeah, yeah, all good. What about the veg? See it, see it, Sid, don't worry, we're all, we're all good. Well done, Sam. Where's the other two gone? What two? The other two. Yo, me, Sharon, well, and Well, between me and you, their crumble's still in there, but no-one's looking after it. Ooh! Shh, keep it stung, Sid. Oh, keep it stung. Oh, we've got to tell them. Right, great deep breath. Good. Yep. Yeah? Well done. Come here, brother. Oh, yeah. That was great. Now they have to move to the finishing kitchen to get everything ready. They have just 30 minutes before service begins. I think I'm getting the hang of this cooking malarkey. You are, you're getting very good. As soon as the risotto's done, the mushrooms are in it, it and it gets stuffed in peppers. That's it. And then we are done. Like, everything's pretty much done now. We're there. Yeah, should we get it under? You all right, guys? Oh, hi, Greg. How are you getting on? We've done all right, haven't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We sort of, uh, we knew our places. <laughs> Mine was peeling spuds and, uh, and doing the mints. I'm the kitchen scullery, scullery maid, yeah. Do you know what? That's not a bad thing for someone to take the lead. Did you take the lead in your double act? No, no, I was a straight man. Oh, yeah, right. You could tell by my jokes. <laughs> yeah. John Sherrode often tries to play a straight man. Does he? <laughs> He's not doing a bad job. <laughs> right, guys, five minutes to service. So now we need to start putting things on the pass. Uh, you need spoons in your dishes, serving, uh, everything's ready, spoon. yeah? Because they're going to be chomping at the bit. No, I'm quite excited today to see what's going on in there, see what they got dished up. It's all right, isn't it? That's all right. Listen, listen, listen. Misha, Misha, here. Here. Oh, right, I'm a bit concerned. I've gone through all your dishes and everybody else. I can't see your dessert. It's, I'm just going to get it now, Chef. You're going to get it's it? It's cooked, yeah. I'm going to run it up to Right, you better get it now, cos... Time in past, Chef? Yes. Yep. Ooh, go. Yes, I'm going to get it. We're going to put some Nes decor on. Didn't know an Essex man could speak like that, did you? Mish. Oh, lovely. Bit of decoration snow on there yeah, as well. You put Is that the, all right? Yeah. Uh, well, looking at the turnout, I hope they've made enough food for everyone. If not, at least I'm near the front. Whoa, that's hotter than the fall. I'm really excited to try it. It's a nice change and um, have great hopes. Sam and Sid have made cottage pie with mixed vegetables and a ratatouille pasta bake. All right, darling, you right. want to take one of those? Danny and Misha have made lamb stew with garlic and rosemary roast potatoes and baked peppers stuffed with mushroom risotto topped with a tomato and basil sauce. How you doing, mate? All right. All right. Afternoon. How you doing, guys? You doing, guys? Can I get a pasta bake, please? Cush come, mate, yeah. No worries. Yeah, yeah cush come, mate. Yeah. Put drop edge on it. Straight off, the crowd is going to the cottage pie. If you want the stew or the mushroom risotto, just come round the back, yeah? Cottage pie! Yeah. Can I have some cottage pie? You certainly can, madam. When it's gone, it's gone. We can't make <laughs> any more. Thank you, careful. It's a little warm. I'm really enjoying it. It's nice. Could do with a little bit of gravy, though, I think. It's a little bit dry, but other than that, it's good. It's good old, decent cottage pie. Yeah, nice. 
Can I have some cotton bud? There's not much left. Smooth mash, bit of butter in it as well. The sweetness because of the onions in there with the meat. I like the combination peas, carrots. Um, I like it. It's seasoned well, the mash is good. But for me, there is an issue with the quantity of mince and mash. I'd like more mince and less mash. While the cottage pie is still popular, the lamb stew is a harder sell. Anyone for soul stew? Soul yeah. stew! Yeah. Soul. If you want Come some on. northern soul, though, I'll stick oh, to yeah, its side. Northern soul, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> guys, We've got vegetable pasta really bake really here, sick. guys. However, Sam and Sid's pasta bake is gaining momentum. Oh, yeah. Of course you can, yeah. Thank you very much. I really enjoy it, yeah, it's very tasty. It's got a nice, proper, authentic sort of Italian flavour to it, and it's very nice. Enjoyed it. I'd have it again, but yeah, really good. What do you fancy, mate? Pasta bake. Pasta bake, yeah, of course. The cheddar cheese across the top adds saltiness and a much needed zing to what is otherwise an unseasoned chunks of vegetables thrown in with pasta and slung in the oven. The tomato sauce is over-reduced and going really acidic and quite sharp. I think his wife probably makes a better pasta bake than that. Service is now halfway through, and Misha is still trying to sell her stew. Anyone for some soul stew? I'll have your soul stew, please. Oh, yeah, I, I, yeah. I thought no one loves me anymore. It's all gone pear shaped. Pleasure. Soul stew, baby. Do you know what, Misha? If it looks as good as you do right now, oh, baby. Yeah. Yeah. it's going to look amazing. Yeah. It's going to taste amazing. Oh, baby, you're good. I love your music. Bless I'm you. sure I'm going to love your food. Thank you, darling. I'm quite impressed with this land of the foods. I don't normally eat lamb, so it was something different for me to try today. It's lovely, yes, seasons beautifully, uh, not too salty, not too peppery, it's perfect. You can see the plate is empty. It's uh, very delicious. I'd like to eat this every day if it's possible. Soul Stew, come to the Paris. The stew tastes great. Lots of rosemary, lovely sauce. The meat is wonderful and tender. The potatoes are good. Uh, they've got a little crispy bit on the outside, well seasoned. I like the stew. I really do. There's a rich gravy there, there's rosemary through the potatoes, the lamb is still soft. I like that. I'm more than happy with that. Now it's up to Danny to prove he was right to make risotto. Anyone you. for risotto? Mushroom risotto? What's that, honey? Uh, no, Beautiful. This is it. I don't often have risotto, I just thought I'd try something a bit different. It's all quite nicely cooked, the rice is just right, so it's good. I'm really enjoying the mushroom risotto today. Um, it's full of flavour, the tomato sauce on top as well just really completes the dish, so I think they've done really well with this one. I like the risotto. The risotto is cooked. I can taste the mushrooms in there. Uh, I don't even mind the, the sauce that's been put across the top, tomatoes, tangy, however, the addition of a half-cooked pepper with the skin on, it's really not nice at all. It's not a bad risotto. There's far too much cheese across the top of it, and the juice from the peppers wash away all the lovely woodness of the mushrooms. And instead, it tastes more like a sort of Provencal rice dish. I only wanted to taste that. Once this, this lot's done, clear down, clean down, get everything away, and then start doing your desserts, yeah? There's 15 minutes to get the next course out, and Chef is a little worried about Sam and Sid's treacle sponge. It's a little, little bit on the uh, gooey side. So I'll just put it back in the oven for him just to see if we can salvage it. The dessert is a little bit touch and go, so we just need it plan B. So peel the bananas, chop them up rustic style, and then we're going to have to go with that. So once the sponge is, we check it. Yeah. If it's dodgy, we're going to go with bananas and custard. Oh, I hope we don't need this, Sid. Hey? I hope we don't need this. So do I. It's disappointing. 
It's gone so well so far. Sid and Sam only have minutes now to get their backup pudding ready. Danny, come here, Danny. What's going on over there? Why are they over there? Uh oh. Sid's oh, peeling bananas be... really quickly. There must be something wrong with it. It's cooked on the edges. But I'm going to go in the centre now, because that's where it's all going to... OK, mate. Uh, oh, <laughs> That's terrible! It's nowhere near cooked. Just stay away from that. Yeah. All the edges. Yeah. yeah. All right? I'm gutted. Just Sorry. basically took it out of the oven too early, far too early. So I'm just trying to save as much of it as I can, and we'll see what happens. How much have you salvaged? Got this much. Right, and you're serving it. A little bit of that, your banana, and then your custard. Yep. You got off from something, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right? And then you just need to apologise. Yeah. And say, yeah, it's all your fault. Yeah. <laughs> it is, though. It is, though. I apologise, Sid. No, it's not. I feel all like right. I've let you down, buddy. No, you haven't let me down. It's a teamwork. Both in this together. For pudding, Misha and Danny have made an apple and raspberry crumble served with custard. And having salvaged some of the dessert, Sam and Sid have made treacle sponge with bananas and custard. Sam, Yo. don't worry, man. Don't worry about it. Don't it. Let it go. So Come on, man. Does that anyone who oh, wants yes. Hello. 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 How are you doing? Anyone want crumble? Yes. Sorry. Is... It went. It's not... This is exactly how he intended it, so... What kind of crumble is this? It's an apple and raspberry. The crumble is proving popular. We've got treacle sponge down here. Treacle got bananas sponge, with it and custard. custard. But Sam's pudding is failing to attract takers. Baby. Hot baby, careful. Huh? Careful. I've never had the uh, apple and the raspberry crumble before, but actually it works really well. Really nice. I did really enjoy it, yeah. Um, I think there's a little bit too much topping and not enough filling, but otherwise it was quite good. It's a very nice ending to the meal. Better than the main course, I think. They've got a nice biscuity top, there's nice custard on there as well, and there is fruit giving of its juice. That'll do for me. I don't think there's enough moisture in the fruit. I like the raspberries with the apple, though, that's good, and I like the custard. But these rocks of crumble top, I think, are just a bit too much. Treacle sponge, anybody for treacle sponge? You can, mate, indeed. Lovely. Oh, Cheers, buddy, so thank you, mate. Thank you. No worries. With lunch coming to an end, Sam's treacle sponge is finally selling. There's one more slice. One more portion. Sorry, one man. more portion left. There was a good portion size, which was really nice. And, um, yeah, it was really good. I was very impressed. It was the nicest treacle sponge I think I've ever had. It was just melt in your mouth. It was amazing. It really was good. It was absolutely fantastic. A lot better than my main course. It could be a very good thing, but it hasn't quite worked out. I like the combination of flavours, custard, sponge and the treacle. It's very, very Moorish. However, that sponge is too heavy. Mm. Listen, it hasn't been a good sponge day for the two boys. Here at Wimbledon, you'd expect to be served better, wouldn't you? Juice. There's not an ace here, that's for sure. No. Juice, I need that to wash out the flavour. <laughs> Baby! Uh, 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 uh. We did it! Well done, boys. Oh, well done, guys. Come on, man. Oh, that was so cool. It was good. It was quite stressful um, halfway through, thinking, are we going to do it? But on a whole, it was good. Yeah, I was surprised. Yeah. Misha and Danny, they performed well. Uh, Misha, 
uh, quite in your face, bit of a diva, quite demanding. She was just clicking her fingers, asking for this, asking for that. But the dishes all tasted nice. They managed very well. Oh, gosh, I'm having a real, real good time. It's wicked. <laughs> I just love being on the edge. You know, I'm a mu look, I'm in music, you know. If you're in the music business, you like living on the edge. Come on. That was exciting, exhilarating, and it's just been a thoroughly enjoyable experience, and, and I just really hope it, it carries on. Whoa. Sam and Sid was a bit of a worry at first, because nothing really was sort of coming together, but Sid's cottage pie, very nice. It just shame about the, uh, the dessert. You know, the dessert like that goes really well with the guys, especially the groundsmen. They love their stodge. So, yeah, it's a shame. Yeah. Frustrating is the word I would use to summarise what's just happened. Just at that last hurdle, those sponges not being cooked, is, it's gutted me, actually. I'm really, really, really frustrated by it. I'm sad that the, the dessert didn't work out, but I can't believe that we've actually cooked for 100 people. Yeah, I think it was great, really. For celebs in an environment like this, it's daunting. They got through the task. I think both teams worked really hard, but I think they were overawed by the event. I'd like to see them up their game, and the next round, they're going to have to up it, really up it. After two days of competition, these four celebrities will now face the challenge to decide who stays. The elimination thing, this is the worst feeling in the world. The thought of that makes me say, why did I do this in the first place? I'm very pleased I've got this far. At my age, uh, I thought, you know, I was washed up and just get my pension. But I'm enjoying it in a weird sort of way. <laughs> this MasterChef journey, has been amazing. It will be sad to, um, to lose two of us. I just hope it's not me. <laughs> I had a word with myself this morning. I was like, come on, Sam, you can do this. You can cook. Just pretend you're at home. I've got to smash it today. Welcome back to the MasterChef Kitchen. The last couple of challenges have been about teamwork. Right now, it's down to you as an individual. Big day today, so you're not just cooking for me and John. We have invited three people to help us judge. Andy Peters. Oh. Christopher Biggins. Whoa. Oh, I love Chris, he's great. And Big Phil Vickery. Oh. oh, my God. Not easy men to please. Oh. I believe that all four of you have got great potential. Your two courses, one hour, 15 minutes. At the end of this, two semi-finalists, which means two of you are going home. Ladies and gentlemen, let's cook. What they're going to have to do today is hold their nerve. Be clever, be concentrated, and well-planned. It's a really tough task. <laughs> Misha has proved to me that she has got a good touch. Her savoury dishes, I think, are great. But so far from Misha, we've seen a pretty horrible apple tart. That's it, as far as desserts go. Very stressed right now. Really don't want you around me right now. Love you dearly. You know I've got a lot of love for you, but not right now. Misha, yeah. why do you get yourself in such a panic? It's you and, and Greg, you, you're very intimidating, you know? You make me scared. What are you going to cook to impress Greg, myself, and our three invited guests? I'm going to do roast pork with cabbage, potatoes, and red peppers. Right. Then rum poached pears with creme fraiche. How much do you want a semi-final place? There's a part of me that really wants to, to stay and win because I just think it's such an achievement because the level's so high. And then there's the other side of me that wants to run a mile. I'm 
I'm not sure about Misha's main course. Pork belly, cabbage and potatoes is going towards a Sunday lunch and then all of a sudden a pepper arrives over the hill. I'll find out later whether the pepper turns out to be a friend or an uninvited guest. What I'm excited about is we might actually get a decent dessert from Misha. A pear, poached nicely with some creme fraiche. Not very ambitious, but maybe edible. Today I think I need to show John and Greg that I can make a nice dessert. I have just failed at every attempt. It's always gone pear-shaped. That's the thing I'm scared of. <sighs> Sid Little has really surprised me. We've had good fish and chips. We've had a really good curry. What I like from Sid now is something really special. Did you imagine this, Sid, cooking for a place in a semi-final? No, I didn't even think I'd be in the competition, actually. We've enjoyed your food in this competition, we really oh. have. What's your stalwart today, Sid? Well, it's a chicken and wild mushroom pie with new potatoes and peas and bacon. The other course is bread and butter pudding. Who's inspiring you? Who's helping you along the way? My wife, bless her, Cherie, yeah. And how's she feel about you being in the competition? She's very nervous. She's more nervous than I am, I think, yeah. Because they are the uh, recipes, as it were, that I've uh, learnt off. You on time? In control? Uh, well, I don't know how long I've got left, so... <laughs> Sid Little does what he knows how to do. And I love that. I love it. I just hope that when you open that pie, it oozes out some lovely sauce. The bread and butter pudding, as long as it's not too stodgy, my issue right now is, does it have the finesse of MasterChef? The only thing I'm worried about is if it might be too pub grubby. But I can only do what I've got in my little brain, and, and that's what I'm doing. When I started, I didn't want to make a fool of myself, and I wanted to show that I could cook. Now, as it's gone on, I've become more and more passionate. I really, really, really want to get through to the semi-finals. Danny. John. You've got a smile on your face. It's fear. Is it? Yeah, I used to smile a lot when I used to race. Didn't mean I was enjoying it. What are you cooking for us, Danny? To start with, I'm going to do pan-fried scallops with a horseradish cream and a pancetta and kale on the side and then for main, sea bass in a coconut marinade and then topped with coconut um, chilli, a little bit of lime zest and served with rice and a little salad. Why these two dishes, Danny? Because I do like sort of Asian flavours and I wanted to try and show that I can cook something a little bit more delicate, like a nice bit of fish and the scallops show that I can cook them. In that dining room today, Mr Phil Vickery. I know. How does it feel cooking for somebody like that who's won Master? I know, and not only that, an iconic rugby player, so it's like, it's two hits, two hits to try and impress, really. Yeah, and, one, yeah. of course, you know that Phil Vickery's winning starter for his final cook-off at MasterChef was scallops. Was it? Oh, it was. Oh, why do you have to tell me that? Next, you're going to tell me you like Asian-inspired food, and that's really going to mess me up today, ain't it, John? Two very interesting courses from Danny. So, scallops, brown on the outside, cooked really well. That horseradish has to be really powerful, and we're going to serve that up with loads of kale, buttery, and, and salty bacon. It could be a lovely thing. We've now got sea bass with Asian flavours. Asian food is a move away from Danny's usual style. Fingers crossed. <sighs> Sam has got energy, skill, and ambition. I'd like for Sam just to pare it down a bit and make sure it's great. Sam, yes. you, you, you look focused, but you look happy. Yeah, I'm trying to be, because I... In my head, I am thinking I really need to smash this. And if I don't, then I think I'll be a goner. What are you cooking for us? I've gone for a starter, so I'm doing a beef and tomato scotch egg with hopefully a runny yolk in the middle with a mustard dip and uh, some watercress. Nice. And for main, I'm doing duck breast with a port and cherry sauce, a potato gratin, and sauteed cabbage with pancetta. 
I really like the sound of it. OK, that's good. Beef scotch egg, mm -hmm. I haven't had, because no. beef mince is like a hamburger around an egg. Yes. Oh, I thought mix it up, make it a little bit different than a, a normal pork one. And how do you feel about a semi-final place? Oh. I would genuinely be so happy. I'm actually frustrated at myself at how much I want to get through. Sam's menu is really ambitious and actually quite interesting. He's taking a risk both with his starter and his main course. The duck needs to be crispy skin, really well seasoned. The flesh needs to be pink and well rested, but it's the sauce that's the important part. Can't be too thin that it washes into the cream of the potatoes. Sam's menu reads well. It's things you want to eat. The big question is, can he do it and can he do it in the time? It's quite daunting cooking for finalists because they've got all the way to the end. So they're very good and obviously they, they, they know what they're talking about when it comes to food. But I would imagine they're going to be quite fierce. Cooking for the critics, I think, was one of the most stressful bits of taking part in Celebrity MasterChef. We cooked for proper restaurant critics as opposed to celebrities, so it was really quite difficult. Do I have sympathy for the contestants? No. Do I want good food? Yes. I drive a hard bargain. Ah! Andy, it's wonderful to be back, going to eat something. I remember the first time I came in last year, I was terrified. I did a tuna carpaccio, which I thought was lovely. I did some of the critics, in fact, one of the critics is here today. He said it wasn't seasoned enough, which I sort of disagree with. Andy, Good how are you? you? Good well, to see you. you, too. Well, this is very exciting, isn't it? Here he is. Hey. It's always good to be back. And I, I, I generally get a little bit nervous, because you remember what it was like. The real big pressure for me was the lemon drizzle cake for the uh, WI. And, of course, WI cakes, it's kind of... They go together. But I think they liked it. I just remember feeling really proud when it when it went out. Well, last year he was so negative about my tuna. <laughs> I, mean, I nearly hit him when I saw him. It. It's a good job he's a friend. But your tuna wasn't that good. <laughs> <laughs> dear, oh dear. <laughs> well, I believe someone won oh, sitting yes. at this table. He didn't like to mention it. No, <laughs> you didn't like to hear it. <laughs> Your main's got to come out in about five minutes. Yeah, that's ready. Well, well it's nearly. It's not ready until it's on the plate, Sid. All right. It needs to come out now. OK. I love Sid. The only thing that worries me about this, this looks like a very heavy meal, cos we've got a chicken and one mushroom pie, which is, which is good. I bet he'll do an open pie with just a pie crust on top. It minimises the risk yeah. and also, I think, helps the presentation. Yes. As much as I love pies, it's not that difficult mm. once you've got your mix. So that has to be delivered brilliantly. Yeah. Looks good, mate. Proper pub lunch, this, isn't it? Well, that's it, yeah. Right, come on. How are you there? You done? I think so. Go, 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 go. Well done, mate. Thank well you. Well done, brother. Oops. You all right? Manage. This is the tricky bit. <laughs> Work. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Hiya, Chris. <laughs> nice Hi, Andy. To see you. Hi, you? Hi, Phil. <laughs> I'll let me help him for it. <laughs> <laughs> We've got chicken and wild mushroom pie with uh, new potatoes, peas and bacon. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy. Thank Thanks, you. Sir. It's an honest plate, isn't it? There's no secrets. Yeah. I think it'll just all be in the taste. You're right. It's not terrible. It's, you know, I've had worse things. It's a little dry, the chicken, which I find interesting. I think the dish is workable, I just don't think it's been uh, executed particularly well. The sauce actually tastes really nice. Yeah. So, it's OK. I find the combination of pea and bacon extraordinary. I don't think the two go well together at all. This is, for me, something you'd get 
in a, a very average pub. It could do with being a bit more sophisticated, mm. but I don't think it's going to stop me eating it. Mm. The whole lot could do with a bit more seasoning, and unfortunately, that chicken is dry. It's not great. Oh, Sid. You've got less than 15 minutes to get your bread and butter pudding out. Bread and butter pudding should be light. I think I've dried it up a bit. It should be crispy on top. I've overdone it, I think. Bread and butter pudding is a very difficult thing to make look good on a plate. And do you know what? I hope he delivers it, because if that yeah. works, he's got me. Are you putting sugar on them or anything? Ice oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oops, a bit too much. We done, Sid? Yes, lads. You're finished ahead of time. Yeah. Go get them, mate. Thank Thanks, you very Sid. much. Oh, listen, that rattling nerves. Looks a bit dry, that. I'm worried about that. <laughs> Stop laughing, Chris. <laughs> it's you. You make me laugh, Sid. <laughs> You've got good old Lancashire bread and butter pudding with cream, if you want it a bit more juicy. Thanks, Sid. <laughs> Thanks for that. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. That was quite frantic, that was. My pudding, it's not how I wanted it to be. It'll be interesting to see what they say. Well, it looks really dry. Is there any more cream? <laughs> Is there a cow? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sid. It's got no sugar in it whatsoever. No. It's bitter, isn't it? Mm. It's just very bland. I've just had a bit of the soggy bit underneath. Oh. I think I'd rather have the hard, crispy bit. Oh. It's just a real shame. No, it's, it's too dry. I mean, the crust is virtually inedible. Uh, it's not moist enough, it's not sweet enough, there's not enough cinnamon, there's not enough raisins. Basically, we've got some baked bread, and it's not good. You know, I feel for Sid, I really do. He's been really honest, really honest through the competition, but this bread and butter pudding is not up to standard. Shall I serve up now? Yeah, you've okay. got six minutes, start right. plating up. All right. Pork belly in an hour 15 is a tough job to do. It needs to be really tender, and I can't see how she could do it in the time. Yeah. It should be crispy, too, the, yeah. the, the crackling. So that is a very difficult one. It's come on, come on, you're going to have to fork, start slicing. Fork, fork, I can't find a fork. <laughs> <laughs> Don't laugh. Well, I think the combinations with sweet peppers and the cabbage, I think, can combine really well. And some nicely cooked potatoes, I think that's got potential to, to taste really, really good. I like your little style of things. Do you know that? Do you? Yeah. You know, for me, it's all about it's got to look pretty, you know? You've got to want to... Yeah. want to make love to the plate, you know? 90 seconds, Misha. I ain't mad at you. I haven't even done my dessert yet. Oh! So it doesn't go now. It goes in 15 minutes. Oh, yeah! So I'm all right. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. OK, good, good, good. That looks nice, huh? Yeah, you feeling it? Yeah. Come on, let's go. All right, baby. Come, Come on. on. Are you going to go with this or just wipe it? Go. Oh, I have to walk with it, don't yeah. I? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Sorry. I was, <laughs> I was busy looking at the plate. All right, OK. Uh, what do you think? Lovely, go. Oh, OK. Hey. <laughs> How are you? Good. So. Um, I've made a roast pork belly with cabbage with caraway seeds and potatoes and sweet red peppers with a little drizzle of sauce, so oh, good luck. If you don't like it, I'll always sing for you, OK? <laughs> <laughs> Got to go now. Uh, See ya. <laughs> Enjoy. Uh, thank you. Portion size, I'm pleased I'm not in a restaurant. 
and this is a main course, or else I could be going home hungry. <laughs> That's my crackling. Oh. Did you hear that? Yeah, I did. That's good crackling. Yeah. The pork is a beautiful taste, although it's tough. I actually really like the sweetness of the peppers against the pork. I agree with you. I like the peppers. And it is a nice piece of pork, but it should be melting in your mouth. The sauce has a really nice, delicate flavour. If that pork was cooked well with that sauce yeah. and potato, I'd be a happy man. Like the soft pork, love the cabbage, like the potatoes, nice and soft, love the sauce around the outside. That gives it real extra flavour. I don't like the pepper in there. The sweetness of the pepper, the undercooked pepper, doesn't quite work with the pork. It's a bit scary, isn't it? You can't rest. 15 minutes, your desserts go. Come on. Oh, come yeah. On. Oh, yeah. Come Sorry. On. Come sorry. on. I'm like looking at him like a Muppet brain. Um, desserts, 15 minutes. Yeah, you're right. I love a rump poached pear myself. I mean, I think it's one of my favourite things. It's simple. It is what it says on the tin. It just yeah. needs to be cooked really well and delivered on the plate. Nice and soft, sweet, cream, gorgeous. I like the look of that. The feel of it. Go, Misha. That's the stuff, love. Misha, you're on time, huh? Misha, let's go. Oh, let's go. I go now. The oh. boys are waiting. Your pair's ready. Let's go. That's great. Okay. <laughs> are you laughing? <laughs> no. How was the, how was the first one? You're not allowed to say, are you? No. Oh, <laughs> man. So this is rum poached pears with creme fraiche. So enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. I think it looks very pretty. If it's not edible, why is it on the plate? I think she's made an effort, though, to yeah, make it look make nice. An effort, but... And I like the fact that it looks like a sort of volcano in the ocean. Mmm. I think the pear is delightful. Yeah. It's a shame the sauce hasn't come off, cos I think... Well, I quite really... like the sauce, funnily enough. And it's not rum, but... Yeah, but... Do you not find it too... I mean, it's... It's like sugar work. But the pear's lovely. I think you're being overly negative. It's I'm not. really, really nice. Well done. Yeah, I enjoyed that. It's very good. Mmm. Mm. The pear's cooked beautifully. I really like it. I like it with the creme fraiche as well. But what we want is a bit of warmth from that rum. There's no contrast between the sugary juice of the pear and the sauce. Saying that, from Misha, we've got a dessert which we like. Oh, so that was uh, super intense. I don't know if I can do better than this. The only way I could do better than this is if maybe... No, I can't do better than this, actually. I've given everything I've got. Danny, five minutes and these dishes have got to go, mate. You're in charge? Scallops, 20 seconds early, they're raw. 20 seconds late, they're tough. I find it helps with the cream when you shake a lot. Helps thicken the cream up, you know? I love scallops. They're my favourite, probably my favourite starter. So I'm expecting a lot from that because it has to be delivered perfectly. Are we just waiting for those scallops to cook? Is that it, Is this it? Yeah, everything's ready to go. Just the scallops and then a quick wipe down. One minute, mate. It'll be on. Well done. You done? You done? Can we go? Yeah. Sure? Yeah. You're about a minute over. Well done. Thank you. How you doing, guys? You all right? Hello. Hello, Chris. I'm never first. Are you not first? <laughs> I'm never first. Wait. Thank you. There you go. So you have a pan fried scallops with a horseradish cream, um, kale, and pancetta, smoky pancetta. Hope you enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I do like the look of it, but I think that a third would be nice.
There is absolutely no horseradish in the cream. But the scallop is seasoned and cooked to perfection. Yeah, I agree. I think the scallop is absolutely delicious. Sadly, the kale is raw. Elements really good. Does it all work together? Not quite sure. No. There's not enough horseradish in there, so I've got cream on top of scallop. Don't like it. That makes two of us. And the problem is, nothing has the flavour to match the majestic scallop. OK. 15 minutes and your fish goes, yeah? Yes, yes. Sea bass. Beautiful. Coconut and chilli topping. I'm not sure if I want sweet and hot on a beautiful, delicate piece of fish. I disagree with you. I quite like the idea of the coconut and chilli because I think sea bass is great, but it's usually always done very simply, so it'd be quite nice to give a little bit of flavour to it, I think. I don't get rice and salad on the same plate. Yeah. Don't understand. Hot and cold should only be done for desserts. Last bits? Yeah, yeah. Just got to put a bit of that. We've got to go, Danny. Come yeah. on, mate. We've got yeah, to go. No way. We're a little bit over. Thanks, Danny. Hi, guys. Hello. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. You have pan fried sea brass with a coconut and chilli topping, served with basmati rice with a little bit of lime zest in it and an Asian salad. Thank you. Thank Hope you, you enjoy. Thanks, Thanks very much. much. I think it looks all right. I love the way that he's done the salad. I think it's probably redundant, but um, it looks nice. My piece of fish, it's definitely overcooked. My fish is, is fine, but the topping is like polystyrene. It irritates the, the mouth and it's sort of... You, you, get, you can't really chew it because it doesn't do anything in there. The little pickled salad is actually quite nice. Yep. I think he tried really hard. He has. It just hasn't quite come off. Mm. I'm enjoying the fish. I'm enjoying the salad, I'm enjoying the rice. However, there is a lot of lime in all three. It's getting a little too citrusy. My issue right now is that I want a little fish dish. And what I've got is I've got a coconut rice salad dish with a little bit of fish running around the outside of it. Pound for pound, that was probably the hardest thing I've ever done. Like, just, it is full on. Just no time to even stop and think. But it's great fun. Ten minutes and those plates go out. I've been to restaurants where they serve scotch eggs as uh, starters, and they, they can work really, really well. And the yolk's got to be runny, hasn't it? And the yolk's got to be runny. That is very important. You can't have a hard yolk. Oh, oh yeah, come on. I like that, Sam. I think it's an interesting starter. It's a kind of Jurassic Park of scotch eggs, isn't yeah. it? Can we make it four out of four, though? Go on. Yeah. Ooh. Whoa, you've given some thought to this, haven't you, brother? I've tried to. Right, I think that's that done. Mate, that is spectacular. Oh, man, I'm shaking. It's like an egg and spoon race. Do you want ah. a spoon to put in? Stop shaking. Ah. Stop shaking. Ah. Look at that. It's lovely. How you doing, guys? You all right? Hi. Thank you. No, no worries. For starters, you've got a beef and tomato scotch egg with a mustard dip and some watercress. I hope you enjoy it. Thank, Thank you. you. Cheers, lads. Well done, you, young man. Great presentation. Yolks look good. Good colour on the egg. I want to eat this. I really am enjoying it. Mm. Pleasantly surprised. The egg is spot on. I love the mustard. The yes. scotch egg is wonderful. Very, very good indeed. And I love, if you turn it over, look at that. That looks fantastic. I didn't want to eat it all, but mm. I'm savouring that. Yeah. I think that's really nice. I don't think he could have made this any better. No, I agree. That is super yum. 
For me, it's comfort food. Cooked really well, runny yolk, great, crispy on the outside, well seasoned. And all I need now is a pint of proper ale, and I'm an happy boy. Main course, 15 minutes. OK. Duck breast, I love, but it's very, very difficult to get right. You've got to rest it for a long time, or else we end up with blood on the plate. And nobody likes that. The sauce has got to be reduced well. The potato gratin has got to be steaming hot with a lot of flavour, lots of cream. The cabbage with pancetta. Oh, what a wonderful combination. Anything else? This is it. Well done, mate. Good job. Hey, guys. Just be careful. The, uh, the gratin was actually cooked in that dish, so it's pretty hot, so... Here you go. Thank you. For your main, you've got a duck breast with a port and cherry sauce, a potato gratin and sautéed cabbage and pancetta. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Because the sauce hasn't had time to reduce, yeah. and obviously the meat hasn't rested, so they've all just blended into one, and it has become a puddle. Something on here is going to have to taste amazing. The duck is actually OK. It's actually quite tender. The potatoes are cooked, but unfortunately, my potatoes, it's burnt oh, my... on the inside. Yeah. I wish I'd finished the whole of the Scotch egg, to be honest, because this is <laughs> not doing anything for me. The potato, the bit on the top is all right, but, I mean, it's not good. And I, I don't like the cabbage, either. The fact it looks horrendous has been saved slightly because there are bits of it that taste nice. I think he knew everything that he wanted to do, but it's just not come together. Given maybe 20 more minutes, he would refine this and make it a really good dish. 20 more minutes, we would have had a completely black <laughs> potato. <laughs> mm. The duck flesh is beautifully soft. I love the sweetness of the cherry sauce. I love the cheese and the garlic in his potatoes. These are big, strong, classic flavours. But for me, there was issues with the rest of the plate. Those potatoes are overcooked. The duck, all the blood's come out. I'm not a fan of it. Man alive. <laughs> I came in today and I wanted to make sure that I gave John and Greg and the guest diners some, something tasty. And I feel that I've done that. You know, they're probably slagging me off as we say this right now, but, you know, <laughs> no, I feel good. I'm actually happy. I knew we had some good cooks amongst these four. But today, we can see the sparkle. There is something there. This is the day for me and our guests was Sam's beefy tomato -y scotch egg. Incredible dish, incredible looking dish, incredible flavoured dish, wonderful. Sam's main course, I wasn't that enamoured by. However, actually, as far as a round goes, I think you've got to give it to Sam. I think Sam's staying in the competition. He's the pick of the bunch today for me. Person, in my opinion, who hasn't made the grade has to go to Sid. I'm sorry to say, I know you love him. I love him. But it wasn't good from Sid today. It wasn't a great pie. The chicken was dry. And it most certainly was not a good bread and butter pudding. I can't do anything about it now. So it's in the hands of the judges. If I go through, you know, over the moon. If I don't, I'm still over the moon because I can't wait for my first glass of red wine. There are some good points about Danny's work today. The scallops were cooked well, however, not enough horseradish in these cream sauce, so it just tasted like cream, which in a lot of ways spoiled the good work that he did with the scallops. The sea bass, the whole flavour of Asia overpowered the fish. I don't think there was any genuine mistakes today. It was just... it was just time. Time is the enemy on MasterChef. Misha has redeemed herself in the world of desserts, in my opinion, because that pear, I liked. It looked great. I liked Misha's belly of pork. You've got to appreciate the work that uh, Misha put in and also her eye for presentation. However, I did not like the addition of red pepper. The first time I've been in that kitchen today, of all the times I've been in there, and I felt really good. That's the only way I can describe it. I feel good.
We have to make a decision. This isn't just another round. This is a semi-final we're talking about. Thanks very much for all your hard work. I think sometimes we forget that you guys have got a day job and you're here to learn. And I hope you have learned. Two semi-final places up for grabs, which means that two of you will be leaving the competition. Our first semi-finalist Sam. Well done, Sam. Wow. Well done, oh my Sam. Goodness, Sam. <laughs> so good. Well done. Wow. Thanks very much. That's amazing. Right. One more semi final place. Our second semi finalist. Is Misha. Well done, Misha. Well, well, well done. done. Danny, Sid, sorry to lose you. Good competition. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks, guys, very much indeed. Thank, Thank you. you. See you again. Cheers, guys. Thank, Thank you very much. You. Oh, dear. It'll be, we'll miss him, won't we? Yeah, good luck to him, mate. Good kids. Yeah. I've really enjoyed the competition. The camaraderie between the contestants has been brilliant. Yeah, I'm a bit upset, but not too upset. Being a master chef has been brilliant. I guess you have to be honest and say the best two cooks have gone through to the semi-finals. But I'll be sad to leave. <laughs> it's so frightening. It's so scary. Ah. Oh my gosh, you have no idea. Semi-finals, are you sure? I can't believe it. Oh, wow. Well. All booze at last. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Cheers. You are. Semi-finalists. Yay! Yes. So I'm really happy. Really, really happy. I'm shocked. Defo are going to celebrate tonight. Yeah. It's, I'm a MasterChef semi-finalist. That's awesome. That's awesome that I can say that. Where's the bottle? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Such a lush. Next time, five new celebrities battle it out in the heat of the MasterChef kitchen. Ah! Disaster's happening around this kitchen. <laughs> but only the best will make it through. It's getting hot in here. We've got five on the go. I feel like a single mum. That is so greasy. My heart is going to come out in a minute waving a white flag. <laughs>